All right, guys, and switching gears back to retail. Retail continuing to run markets this morning. Targets miss tempering early earnings optimism seen from Walmart and Home Depot. Retail sales data adding to that picture. Let's step back and take a broader look with Steen Jacobson, who is the Saxo Bank Chief Investment Officer. Steen, great to have you here with us this morning as we are continuing to evaluate what this all tells us about the mindset of the consumer what would you extrapolate from both the economic data as well as the earnings reports to really kind of paint the picture of exactly where consumers find themselves as a part of the economy right now that, that is two thirds driven by them? So overall, the consumer is in, is in fine shape. And then what you find in terms of the actual reporting, you find a very scattered sort of uh, picture in terms of how the companies are doing. Some people, some companies clearly has been left with too much inventories in this cycle. And some of them, of course, have been stacking up too, simply because of one year ago, uh, even getting commodities and goods on, on the on the shelf was a, was a big issue. But overall, the private sector balance sheet has been shown to be extremely rely, uh, resilient. You see that through the credit card spending. You see that through even the economic data that comes out of the uh, Federal Reserve and uh, and 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 the Bureau of Statistics. So for me, this this is just another example of how the market is clearly moving into a stock pickers market more than a momentum market. Steve, let me push back on that because we've seen a lot of momentum uh, over the past week on these meme stocks. It's been a very confusing names. We've been highlighting all morning long, Bed Bath & Beyond, seeing some big moves and a lot of cash plow into AMC and GameStop. What is driving this? It's the euphoria, basically. If, if you want to really create a narrative, I don't think stocks like that need a narrative in themselves because it's it, it's like a game uh, for, for a... Uh, allocator like me, I, I don't even spend more than two minutes a day co concerning myself with the memory stocks and the likes. But my, for, but if you want to find the rationality for what goes on, it's basically that the, the soft landing is going to work for the equity market. Uh, we have a free ride in terms of the maximum interest rate that we'll see. And on top of that, then you clearly get what we uh, in, in our business call convexity price. So as interest rate and volatility comes down, these stocks become extremely attractive for short term speculators. But let me stress, this is entirely speculative. You can just as well go to the casino and put all your money on black. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, Steen, what we think about, though, the what you just mentioned a moment ago, the soft landing probability and, and whether or not a real recession would be felt as part of that soft landing, what would you kind of put the expectation at around that? So I think from uh, from my perspective, we are in a recession if you want to talk about real growth, but we are so far away that you, that is almost demandable if, if you talk about nominal growth. So right now, the U.S. economy is humming along with nine to ten percent nominal growth, while the reporting that we've seen in terms of two quarters of negative growth in real terms is coming down. But remember, the stock market is actually using uh, nominal growth rates. Of course, the the sales top line of most companies is cost driven by the actual sales they have, not the real sales. But if you did actually bother to do the exercise of taking nominal growth of, uh, of the, for instance, the retail companies and, and deconstruct that with the actual in underlying inflation rate, you will see that the numbers that's been reporting in earnings per share is, is actually very, very poor relative to the euphoria that exists in the marketplace. So uh, a long answer to your question, basically, in real terms, we are in a recession. In nominal terms, there's not even a 10% a, a chance that we reach that in 22 uh, in terms of uh, for the nominal side of it. So, Steen, just, you know, staying on some of these retail earnings, uh, look, the weakness was very clear at their core. I mean, do you think these numbers from a Walmart, Target, you name it, even TJ Maxx, they suggest we are in a recession? No, I don't think they necessarily. I know we, we all love to do the back of an end of 70 percent of the U.S. GDP growth is, is from consumers. But the, the consumer side that the targets and the Walmart you look at is the consumption and it is the consumption. If, if, if I'm diplomatic at the lower end of the income brackets and lower income brackets, of course, is severely hit. So what I think is the biggest story here is that the low income brackets in the U.S. is being hurt massively and, in, and in being impaired from the high energy prices, from the higher uh, 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 inflation that we see. But in terms of the middle income and, and the high income braggers in the U.S., there's absolutely zero impact so far in terms of their ability to both live through this inflation elevation, but also deal with it. So in total terms, if you take you know the relative size of the different brackets, we are still uh, at a, at a very slow uh, and, and grinding and bleeding uh, lower in terms of uh, 
the consumer's uh, po pocketbook, basically. Steen Jacobson, Saxo Bank Chief Investment Officer. Good to see you. We'll talk to you soon.